Uh, all right. So I guess the, the biggest news coming out of that show uh, is MJF returning. Mm -hmm. He came in after um, Adam Cole. The, so the opener, Will, Will Ospreay beats Roddy Strong, uh, the opener of the pay-per-view. And Adam Cole comes out and cuts a promo. And MJF came out and he basically just wait you know he just kicked him low really quickly or they did a hug and then he tossed him out and that was all we saw of adam cole and he cut quite the promo uh i think he tried to tell about i don't know six months of storylines in one promo to kind of explain why he was back and you know if we go back two years you and i are in vegas and it's kind mm -hmm. of the beginning of this war of 24 and then he just shows up with a tattoo on his calf that says he's team AEW for life. So I guess that's the end of that storyline that we were wondering about two years ago. I guess. Um, I mean, I don't know about life, but I'm sure, you know, he's probably got um, however much left in his deal. And then from there, I don't know. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, there's so, there's so much stuff. It's such a, it's such a flux. I mean, one of the things and I don't know more, you know, other than the rumors. I don't really want to address those. But but um, Justin Barrasso uh, today in Sports Illustrated, he talked to Tony. And Tony was giving him a very positive outlook as far as the negotiations go. And then Justin wrote that he thinks that or that, that there's going to be he expects a deal before the end of the um exclusive negotiation period that they would sign a deal with WBD. Now, I don't know like if that was just his guess or he knows something. Um, when is it, that period? Um, just I, all I can say, because I can't say is soon, pretty soon yeah. now, you know, I mean, it's been for a long time. It's been not so soon. It's soon. So you're talking like a couple months or, or something like that. It's soon. <laughs> it's 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 not late summer. It's sooner than late summer. How's that? Okay. All right. Uh, and you know, one of the things that WBD is actually getting a lot of flack for is they had the NBA in that negotiation period where they were exclusively negotiating, and they seem to be about two hundred million short from what the NBA wanted, and so that so that that exclusive period lapsed and then two other companies kind of slid in under them to take that deal. And now the NBA doesn't want to do business with WBD at all because they don't, they don't think that WBD offers them the best deal. So I, I don't know if that has anything to do with whether or not they get the, Every, well, I, mean, I mean, everything has everything, something to do with something. You know, one of the things with the NBA deal is that, that I don't think people realize is that like, you know, they're, they're going like, oh, they're going to lose the NBA and then, you know, everything's going to collapse. And it's like the, the one. So, so TNT's, you know, and, and AW collision and, and rampage are on TNT, but the main show is on TBS, mm -hmm. but it is the same company and it all affects and it is money and all that. Okay. So they're, they're talking about TNT's going to lose TNT gets about $3 a head for rights fee. So that's about right. 2. 2.1 billion dollars, okay? And TBS gets about a, a dollar, so that's about um 700 million. If they lose the NBA, TNT will be getting less. Um would it be $2, would it be a dollar 50? I don't know. Um it'll be more than it, it it's not going to go down to a dollar. Um, I, you know, but if, if we, if we take a, to me, a dollar 50 be a worst case, case scenario. So the NBA will cost them in these rights fees about, um, a billion dollars. Okay. You know, like billion five and 50,000. Okay. So the NBA is going to cost. Okay. So they'll get a million 50,000 or a billion 50,000 less in, um, carriage fees carriage fees and then they'll get also lose out on ad rates because the nba is good you know good ad you know deliver and everything like that so let's just say everything together let's just say it's 1.5 billion dollars okay let's say it's let's be nice and say 1.7 billion dollars the reality is 
they're not getting the NBA for $1.7 billion. The NBA is a loss leader to the company. Mm -hmm. So people who are thinking like they're going to lose the NBA, now they're not going to have any money. The reality is, is they're going to actually have more money without the NBA than with the NBA. But there's the prestige of having the NBA. So it's like if they, you know, people think like my thought was, is losing the NBA is beneficial to AEW, but there's so many moving parts and you don't know. A year ago, I would have said it for sure. You know, I mean, the thing with it, you know, AEW is that they are colder. Their their ratings are down as compared to a year ago. And this is the contract year and they're the lowest they've ever been. And that's just the reality of the situation. Um, but if they get a good increase, then, you know, AEW is good to go. I mean, and, and that's that. And like, like I said, like, we're going to know this thing, you know, has been, there's been talk for over a year because everybody thought last year was the contract year, but they did have the option for another year. And I just, you know, I, I, I had figured that, that when they made the new deal, because they had to make the new deal for collision, I just figured it'd be a whole big new deal. And instead, you know, they did a deal for essentially the, the deal that was made last year was for, you know, 18, 18, 19 months, you know, as opposed to, I figured they'd, they, when collision started, they would make like a four year deal. It's and they made a 19 month deal till the end of this year. So they kind of just put, you know, from a WB standpoint, and it's probably everything to do with the NBA is like, we're going to, we don't, we're not going to make any long-term commitment to these guys, but we don't want to lose them. And we're going to keep them on the air until we get this NBA thing straightened out. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do after the NBA. And the longer you wait, the more your battle plan is going to be based on, you know, you're going to do a streaming app. You're going to follow ESPN or what are you going to do? You know? And it's like the longer you wait, the more you're going to probably be understanding what you're going to do. And then the more you can figure out, you know, as far as how much it's worth to us um, for whatever we're going to get, whether it's streaming or whatever. And the longer, you know, so it, 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 it's like this is the time the deal is going to be made. And, uh, you know, that's that's that. Um, AW, I mean, like uh, Tonight Show, I think that the thing with Tonight Show is that I thought that that it's which is funny because people are like. You know, with the, the, there's no stories. It's like there's too many stories, way too many. Okay, <laughs> way too many stories, and there's way too much creative. You know, I mean, it, it it's it's like before there was the criticism was that it's all matches and and you know no creative, and now it's you know so creative. But that's you know over creative is not a good thing in wrestling. You know, it's like with when the show was over. You know, my my thought was look, wrestling was really good crowd was really hot most people like the show but they did so many angles i don't even remember them all and that's not a good thing if i don't remember them all and it would have been better to spread some of them out to just do matches like like you know you you, you have your your screwy finishes and run-ins and things like that and that's fine on, on a few but it almost felt like it was every match like that and it's like some of these angles like the max thing you want to bring them back that's that's good and maybe one or two other things but so much of this stuff, like like the Mercedes Monet thing, it should just ended with Mercedes Monet winning the championship. Then they do the whole thing with Chris Statlander and and um and um Stokely yeah. Stokely turning on Willow, and it's like they could have done that Wednesday, and then we'll have something to talk about Wednesday, and it'll be more focused on everyone's mind, you know. And that's that was that would be my main criticism of the show is that there's so much that could have been done next week's on this week's TV and next week's TV where it would be one of a few things because you were doing so much on this show and you didn't need to do all of it in one night. Um, you know, so that's, that's the negative, but I mean, as far as a lot, a lot of very good wrestling, a lot of thought put in to every match. Like when I was watching these matches, the one thing I would say is, is like, these were not cookie cutter matches. These were like, there was a lot of thought, you know, you know, edge thought of a million different things in his match, Adam Copeland, you know, Christian, same way. I hope he's okay, by the way. I don't know yet, you know, as far as that. I I watched very... I watched a lot of the press conference up until we started, and there was no mention of him yet. So hopefully somebody brought it up. That would be my but that'd been one of my two big questions is how's he doing? And you know, as far as like, you know, what's where's the negotiation stand? Although that was kind of asked on Tim Thursday, but that'd be like my first question almost is you know, what's up with uh Adam Copeland, is he okay? Although Tony doesn't really, Tony doesn't really like to answer questions when it comes to injuries. Um, the only, like he will answer 
if the person has already publicly said something, sure. but if not, he's usually going to try to avoid it. You know, that's just how he is. And, um, but yeah, that was my big question as far as like the thing went, because, um, you know, Adam was on the top of the case, you know, I, you know, I, I, Adam, you know, God bless him. You know, he, um, his philosophy right now is in every match that he does, he's going to do something that he's never done before in his yeah. career. So his thing that he's never done before in his career was come off this giant freaking cage with an elbow drop to put um, Malachi Black through the table. And he's up there. And I don't know what the deal was, but it was kind of like, I don't think he was sure what he was going to do. And he pretty much did what Mercedes did to almost end her career. You know, just jumped off and landed. You know, Mercedes lost her balance on the top ropes, just jumped off. And then when she landed, you know, she broke her ankle or foot or both. And in this case, um, I don't know what happened. He just came off and instead of doing the elbow through the table, he landed on his feet and then did the elbow through the table. But the, the you know, the ankles and the knees from very, very high height. And he's not a small man. You no. know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of weight coming down and he's 50 years old, you know, um, and you know, almost 51. And it's it's like when he landed, I thought he was hurt really bad. Then he just the whole match, and it's like well, he's not hurt at all. And then, like, snap, when that match is over, he's it's limping. like all of a sudden that adrenaline wore off and he was hurting. It looked like to me that he didn't want to overshoot the jump. So it it was almost like he didn't jump, he kind of just fell. And he realized either that he wasn't going to make it or maybe he kind of didn't commit fully to the whole thing, like at the last minute. And uh, and, and he just came, came up short. Like it was, there looked like there was a little bit of indecision, but it'll be interesting to see if he talks about that, because I can't I mean, imagine that that wasn't like just the scariest thing for him as it was happening. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then when it was over, I almost had saw this look in his face, and maybe I read it wrong because he was talking to the doctor, and it was almost like one of those things of like the night um, he tore his Achilles, you know, where it's like mm -hmm. he, he we did it at a house show, and he just kind of grabbed the mic. I think I tore my Achilles, and it's not good, <laughs> you know. And you know, he was like in his late thirties, and and you know, he was afraid that that was the end of his career, but yeah, but it wasn't, um, you know, and. Uh, Hopefully this is not, you know, I mean, AEW's had so many injuries, um, you know, and look, they, they've been doing a crazy style for years and years and years, and, and they've always been around 8% injured, but they're like around 15 now for whatever reason, and lots of big ones. I guess Max is back, so that, and Adam McCole's on his way back, um, and hopefully the, some, some, some of the others will be on their way back, but, you know, it's, um, you know, it's it, it'd be tough um, at, at his age to have to rehab and come back and everything. I'm sure he will, but um, it's, it's, I mean, it I, seems like he and Christian still got some, you know, some things that they want to do together. So, you know, that would be motivation for him. I'm sure. Don't, don't they, don't they have like a year's worth of ideas that they still want to do? <laughs> that's what I heard. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the ideas are, but it's, I mean, I it's yeah. I mean, can you imagine they're probably, these are probably ideas that they've had for, a long long time too right like you yeah know. well one would think that they're going to end and, and have that tag team run at the very end right you know they've done they've, and that is probably their biggest drawing card you know left uh is just to get back together and do one more run like you if we think about how how well tony and, and creative did with the sting thing you could do something very similar with those guys uh, in a tag run, especially if, if they are nearing the end. It sounds like it sounds like Adam is nearing the end. At least he has said publicly. I haven't heard anything about what Christian thinks, but that would yeah, be. And great. he wouldn't he wouldn't talk publicly. Adam's more like telling you what you know. He's like talked like eighteen months. But when a wrestler says eighteen months, it's it's like I never even pay attention because it's like. That that changes when a wrestler says eighteen months, they're usually going to wrestle for another twenty years. So, <laughs> which I don't think I don't I don't anticipate him wrestling at seventy. I don't see that, but I do. Um, and he may very well only go another eighteen months. I don't know, but um, you know, it, it's it's like when 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 Sting at his age gave a firm retirement date, I believed him. In most other cases, you know, I mean, I'm just learning from history, and it's like you know, just don't believe him because 
you know, Ad, Adam has given many, many dates of what he's done. And, and um, many of them ended 20, were 20 years ago <laughs> and they're not 20, but 10, uh, 10 or 11. And, and here he is and, and, and still doing well, you know, and that was actually, I mean, he had a good match. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.